Hey everyone, so I had another video that I was working on for this week, but the craziest story popped up that I just had to cover. So a few weeks ago, some Diablo Immortal players started noticing an influx of whales. In particular, in PvP, there was a flood of people coming in with super high resonance, and they were just totally dominating. It's no secret, Immortal is a very pay-to-win game. Whoever spends the most money is going to be the strongest. That is basically how it is. What was notable here, though, was the fact that seemingly out of nowhere, the average resonance or the power of these whales was quickly spiking, which meant either people started spending way more money all of a sudden or something else was going on. The complaints started piling up online with some people claiming that these were illegitimate whales, especially since people were noticing there were a lot more third-party sites selling eternal orbs for very cheaply. While there was no way to prove this influx of whales were fake at the time, it has since turn out to be true. This is an absolutely crazy story that just gets crazier the deeper you dig. We've got this pay to win phone game, stolen credit cards used to purchase orbs from fraudulent third party sites, and then Blizzard punishing these players by making it so that they can still access their account but can't play most of the game until they pay off a literal in-game orb debt, the equivalent of which, at least in one case that we know of, of up to $35,000. It is, it's nuts. It is really, it is a crazy story. I'm going to dive into all of the nitty gritty details, but first let's get a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by SD Gundam Battle Alliance. This is a multiplayer Gundam action RPG where you will battle super deformed versions of mobile suits from the Gundam series. Some of the game's primary features include a deep single player campaign that has you leading a three unit squad into battle. You'll smash foes to acquire new suits that you will then level power up and take back into the fight. In the game story, you will be playing through many of the various famous scenes from the Gundam works, and also as an action RPG, you're going to have an array of different attacks, combos, defensive maneuvers at your disposal to take on the SD threat. There is cooperative multiplayer as well. Two other people can join your squad, letting you all play through the game together. And of course, there will be a wide array of different mobile suits and mobile suit weaponry for you to unlock. So if you're interested in learning more and checking out SD Gundam Battle Alliance for yourself, go ahead and use the link in the description below. Okay, so here is what's been happening. Like I mentioned a few weeks ago, people were noticing a big influx of players with really, really high power levels, basically. Well, what was taking place was that those Diablo Immortal players had been going to third-party sites to purchase eternal orbs for significantly cheaper than their in-game cost. So currently, a bundle of 7,500 orbs in Diablo Immortal goes for $100 if you buy it through the cash shop. That same 7,500 orbs for a time at least on some of these third-party sites was being sold for as low as ten dollars it looks like it was averaging like like between 30 40 and 50 dollars but there was a period of time where you could get 7500 orbs for ten dollars from these sites so anyone looking to get orbs for cheap were obviously going to these places now you might be asking yourself how exactly are these sites offering what blizzard is charging a hundred dollars for for only ten dollars it's quite simple actually Th theft the answer is thievery. They're they're stealing. So what these sites will tell customers to help keep their conscience clean is a whole nother story though. Sometimes they'll say something like, oh, it's just regional price differences. So we buy from parts of the world where the orbs are really cheap, or they'll say, and this is a great one, this is the other story that they give. They say, oh gosh, we've got like all these unused gift cards. We just so happened to come across thousands and thousands of dollars of unused gift cards. And you know, it would be a waste to have them just sit here. How about this? What if, what if I buy orbs for you with them, but I'll only charge you like one tenth of the price because you know I'm such a good guy and we wouldn't want these gift cards to go to waste, right? People believe that. People actually believe that or they just don't really think about it or they just don't really care because what's really happening most of the time is that stolen credit cards are being used either outright or to purchase gift cards that the third party site will then sell at a reduced rate to buyers like this example in Diablo Immortal. Now it should be no surprise to you credit card theft is a massive industry places collect credit card information in many ways, reaching websites where the info is stored, phishing scams that typically target the elderly or just tech illiterate people. Spyware is another common method, but yeah, there are a lot of ways. And the point is stealing credit card information is big business. It happens all the time. You probably almost certainly know someone or you yourself have been like a victim of it at some point in your life. If you haven't, you probably will be. It's just so commonplace. That credit card information is acquired and then it is often sold to places like 
like these third party sites or to individuals who will use that information to either buy stuff outright, like I said, or to purchase gift cards. And then that puts the transaction one step removed from whatever they then buy with said gift cards. Enter third party key resellers, gold resellers, or eternal orb sellers, which is what's happening here. There's also another method they will attribute to why these prices are so absurdly low. Sometimes they'll say it's like a glitch. They'll be like, hey, we found a glitch in your game and it lets us redeem like a thousand orbs for nothing. So just let me log into your account and I'll charge you only $10 for a buying a bundle, but it is mostly lies. Like sometime glitching can be sold in games, but a lot of the time, if you purchase from any of these sites, you're involved in the industry of credit card theft. Basically you are directly transactioning with that. Um, that's what's happening. And that's exactly what took place here. There were a ton of Diablo Immortal players paying these third-party sites extremely reduced rates for orbs. And then this is how the process works from there. The site will request their username and password. Then someone logs into their Diablo Immortal account, uses the stolen credit card or the gift card purchase with a storing credit card to buy however many bundles of orbs they uh, made an order for. They will then log out and the transaction is complete. Now at that point, the player probably changes their passwords really quick and then they log into their freshly loaded up account and spend those new orbs on cosmetics or more likely on crests and materials that they use to get significantly stronger and that has what has been happening in Diablo Immortal for some time now and as crazy as that story is it's also pretty mundane in the world of um, third-party games sellers gold sellers have been around in online games for a very long time but it gets even more interesting and crazier the further you dig in and especially once blizzard steps in so no doubt blizzard has been aware of and tracking these transactions for some time they have a history of dealing with third-party gold sellers in wow and diablo so this isn't exactly like new territory for them they are very familiar well about six days ago they started cracking down any accounts that were flagged for purchasing orbs through these third-party sites had whatever amount of orbs were purchased subtracted from their account leaving them with a negative eternal orb balance what's more though is that anyone with a negative orb balance cannot participate in most in-game group activities or things relating to trading and gear grinding so they can't join into a party they cannot run rifts they can't do dungeons and they also can't access the in-game market in order to gain access to any of this content or these systems again they have the option of paying off their orb debt, which as of today, at least for one player, is reportedly as high as negative 2,491,025. The cost to bring this to zero by purchasing those orb bundles from the in-game shop legitimately is roughly $35,000. This player would have to spend 35 grand in order to gain access to most of what this game's content is, the markets, the rifts, and doing the dungeons. They can, however, <laughs> They can still PvP. So any of these players who are running around with negative orb balances, they haven't been outright banned. And there are some cases in which that is the case, but a lot of them have the opportunity to pay off and they can still PvP. And those players are frolicking through the battlegrounds, wreaking havoc on Immortals, quote, legitimate whales. And boy, oh boy, do those people have a thing or two to say. I've seen numerous Reddit threads uh, popping up complaining about this, like this one. Get these fake whales out of here. The next Negative orb players are all still running around like they own the server. This is a slap in the face to everyone who legitimately paid for their orbs. They should not be allowed to participate in anything until their debt is repaid. Or there's this one. Blizzard negative orb shouldn't be allowed in Battleground. This is disturbing that my server is full of tons of fake whales capped on resonance. They don't even need Elder Rifts or the market anymore, but they can still join Battleground. What kind of soft ban is that? Another interesting thing that's been popping up as a result of all of this are a whole Whole lot of high level accounts available for sale. That's right. Uh, all of a sudden, people are trying to get rid of their decked out high resonance characters for pretty reasonable prices, might I add. Like, hey, it's not too shabby. Uh, also, in other news, there have been reports of players who recently bought accounts that have been getting banned for seemingly no reason at all. What's going on? Could there be any connection? There's a bunch of people ditching their accounts that they 
bought third party orbs from that they know they're going to have to deal with this negative balance or get banned and they're just trying to offload them and make some of their money back. So as insane as all this is, uh, Blizzard has come out to address it, kind of. They spoke to PC Gamer and said, we have been looking to abnormal eternal ore purchases that have been reported among the community and taken action to prevent players from purchasing eternal orbs through unofficial channels. Investigations have been made for accounts that have participated in these activities and disciplinary measures were implemented against accounts that were found to have violated the Blizzard terms of service. We will continue to monitor and take action as needed. And what isn't really discussed here is the particular means in which Blizzard is addressing this and how much uh, of a problem it is, how shady it is in and of itself. So I want to highlight this, like Blizzard's response to this is the decision to slap players caught buying from these third party sites with a negative or balance, forcing them to pay it off in order to fully access their accounts. And it's just, it, it's nuts, dude. There are so many other routes they could have gone. Like for example, they could have just put the account balances to zero instead of imp implementing this like odd debt system that limits gameplay activities. Although that wouldn't really be much of a punishment, right? Like that wouldn't really be reprimanding them for what they did if they just put the account to zero. So I don't know, what about removing whatever was purchased with orbs? Blizzard can clearly see that these orbs are being bought and then they can see what those were spent on. So theoretically they could remove it. It does get more complicated once you throw legendary crest and the rift system into the equation. So they buy these orbs illegally. They use those orbs to purchase crest and then they take those crest into rift runs to empower them, to give them better gear drops. And then the gear drop, they do with whatever from that point going forward, putting it into other systems, breaking it down, melding it, whatever. It is more complicated, but Blizzard certainly has track records of all of this. If nothing else, they could even just revert accounts back to prior to the uh, illicit purchases. They could have done that as well. Or finally, they could just ban the accounts, right? Like just get rid of them altogether. You know what they're doing. You know they're buying from these third party sites. You know all of the issues associated with that. Get rid of the accounts, get rid of their characters, everything they spent, whatever, get screw it, get rid of it. But they're not doing that. Instead, they're doing this craziness. They're giving players the chance basically to buy their way back into Blizzard's good graces. And that is just like the epitome of everything wrong with Blizzard today. Honestly, I mean, they know what these sites are. They know how they function. They know that most of these transactions are done with stolen credit cards because they're the ones who get hit with the chargebacks. They are well aware of this whole market and what takes place within it. So instead of banning people, they are dangling a carrot on a stick. They are letting them drop thousands of dollars, upwards of $35,000 in that, the case of that one player to keep their characters, which you can bet some people are absolutely going to do. Like if they've already dropped thousands into the game, they are much more likely to spend money to maintain that character. This is like peak sunk cost fallacy in action, plain view. And Blizzard, is taking advantage of it. In fact, they're they're looking to scrape some money off the top of it as well. Blizzard, you just need to ban all of the accounts, plain and simple. I don't know, like this debt system is ridiculous. This fact that you're dangling these players' characters over their heads where you know if they broke TOS and you're saying they broke TOS, forget this whole negative account balance thing. Get, get rid of the accounts. If they want to play again, you know, they want to spend more money in your shop again, whatever. That, that, That'll, that's, that will probably happen, right? But this this system, they're saying, hey, I know you spent all this money. You could get it back. You could do all the activities. But then also, as much as part of it is like kind of funny that we've got all of these whales in this pay to win game complaining about all these fake whales ruining their whaling experience, as much as I do get a kind of a bit of a chuckle out of that, it's also ultimately like crummy, right? Like people have... Blizzard, these, the people who are legitimate whales, who have given you thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars, their experience is getting ruined by these people as well. If you, I can't even believe I'm saying this, but if you're going to be catering to everyone, anyone, it should be the legitimate whales, at least. I don't know. This, like, like I said, this whole story, it's just nuts. It is a crazy, crazy thing. Uh, might do a follow-up on it as well. This video was put together a little quicker than I, I typically do, but I hope it was still interesting for you, if nothing else. It is, it's a good, it's a good story. It's something. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me today. Uh, thank you, as always, for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.